is a start to make in the 1957. He's the first one in surrender in the 1967 to have 60 different flavors every day. Wow. At the time is a lot of flavor, yeah. but now for me I'm making more than 150, 160 Whoa. flavors. I have just 30 flavors outside, but because I'm working with fresh ingredients and see some food, we always change the rotated of them. And the last six, seven years, I start to specialize, not just making a fruit and cream gelato, but start to making vegetable, salty, fish, and alcoholic flavors. <laughs> Something like tomato and basil, rosemary, olive oil, pumpkin, ham and melon. I do octopus gelato, smoked salmon. I'm making rice with seafood. I do beer, whiskey, gelato. Jack Daniels, wine. I tell you this because with the gelato it's possible making anything. When I have a new idea, I just need a pen, paper and the calculator. Because when you put all the ingredients together, it's very important to put in the right percentage in the right amount. Because the gelato roughly is coming all the time. But if you don't balance, your gelato is coming or too hard, or too soft, or it's not cream, it's good enough. It's a three big difference between ice cream and artisanal gelato. The first difference is the ingredient. Every ingredient used in the artisanal gelato is with a fresh milk, fresh cream and the fresh fruit when it's the season time. <coughs> the ice cream on industrial gelato, because you want a standard product, 12 months a year, especially with the fruit, it's not possible to work. Because you don't find all the time, and if you find after the season, it's not taste the same. For us, it's not a problem, because when we don't find, we do different things. The second difference is the hair inside of the gelato. The hair inside the artisanal gelato is going from 20 to 35%. And we call this effect the overrun. This is an air. This one. Air. <laughs> this is a gelato machine. And the air is come here and is go in the gelato. But for that cream machine, I have next to this part, is in a big wheelchair with the manopla. Because it's in a compressor, you decide how much air you want to push inside your gelato. And usually it's going from 70, 20, 90 percent of overrun. And if you want to know if you're strong, or when you go back home, if you buy a basket of ice cream, you see when it's a frozen, it's full like this. If you take off the freezer and wait it's coming melted from here, boom, it's coming down here. Because all the hair is applied and it's just to leave the solid parts of the basket. And that's why in Italy, when we sell a gelato, we put on the scale. Because we sell a gelato a kilo. When you buy the ice cream, if you turn around, you buy a liter. Because one liter plus the head is making double the volume. Okay? Because you're working on volume product. The third difference is the chef life. The chef life for artisanal gelato is going from one to three days. We're never making a lot of gelato stock in the freezer because the idea is working with fresh ingredients, sell fresh whatever you make. It's not owned by fresh fruit or fresh milk and stock in the gelato for 8, 10, 12, 20 weeks in the freezer. And that's why we rotate all the flavors. For example, today I'm making ricotta pear with sheep or ricotta. I'm making a caramel with almond and caramelized mixed together, you know? We always do different things. Last week we do chili, you know, chocolate with chili. And it's very important to change the flavors. We always have the standard flavors, but the other we rotate all the time. Now, for making my fruit gelato and for you too, you need to prepare this type of syrup up here. This one we call a thick syrup, and it's making with water, white sugar, glucose syrup, and a little bit of carob of flavor. That's the recipe you need to prepare. Sugar syrup, the one up here. <clears throat> okay? Sugar syrup. Don't worry, because after I give it to everyone, one of these, okay, with all the recipe. Put the ingredient together on the stove, and warm it up around 40, 50 degrees Celsius. It's very important to cook the syrup the day before because like this, the day after is already cold. Now, if you want to make it, for example, strawberry gelato, the recipe in the middle here, you need 550 grams of the syrup you prepare up here, 350 grams of fresh strawberry, 110 grams of water, and a little bit of lemon juice. Blend everything together. If you have a gelato machine, you put in the gelato machine, and the gelato machine is making a rest. If you don't have a gelato machine, you need to buy one because it's not gelato. <laughs> now, if you don't have a gelato machine, it's in the old style, you make a gelato without. You need a stainless steel pan. It's important it's not high, but why? You need a lot of cubes of ice, and if you find that the dry ice is better, because the difference between the regular ice and dry ice, the dry ice is coming melted slowly. Thick salt on top of the ice, because the salt is put the temperature much down. 
you need another stainless steel pan to put in the middle the salt and oil. Put your mix inside the pan, and with the whisk, you just whisk it. If it's not a quantity, in 15, 20 minutes, your job is done. And look, you're making the same backpack to the other machine. Your other machine is working on this way. All around here is like salt and ice. But now for it, it's not possible anymore. Now the other machine is working with stainless steel tubes with water all around here. That's my stainless steel pens, and that's the whisk. When this bus starts to come in cold, the whisk is a move, the head is coming and it's going to the gelato. To make it go, salt and ice, stainless steel pen, and that's the whisk. The only difference for me, the whisk is electric. <laughs> and for you it's a... Yeah. A lot of work. If you have electric blender, you know the bar mix with the whisk on top? You can use, it's important you don't put the full speed on. Because if it's going too fast, you work it up your mix and after you know it's making a lot of a froth. And it's growing, growing, growing. And it's right one point when it's collapsed. <clears throat> All the recipe I give you here on this side, we call the sorbet. You know what this means, sorbet? No milk. What does it mean? No milk. No milk. Okay. And you know it's still gelato? Because usually the people is think sorbet is not a gelato. Gelato is on top and the family is divided into sorbet gelato and cream gelato. I divided the fruit in three different categories. The lemon recipe up here, you make lemon, orange, mandarin, all the juicy fruit flavor. The strawberry recipe in the middle here, you make strawberry, blackberry, raspberry, peelberry, all the mixed berry. The mellow recipe down here, you make mellow, mango, papaya, peach, pear, pineapple, all the popo and the honey and the thick fruit. Down here is the recipe for making homemade limoncello. You like limoncello? Yeah. You want to know the way to making go? Yeah. 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 For making a limoncello, of course, you need a good lemon. Okay. You know why the lemon in Turin is so famous? Volcanic soil. Sorry. Volcanic soil. Yeah. It's growing for this, but it's, it's a famous for one thing. Now it's on the end of the season. That's why it's not perfect to do this, but still alright. The lemon in Turin in the 2000. Is give the certificate of EGP. It's a special certification for this product, for this part of Italy, and all of them. Everyone is thinking for the juice, but it's not for the juice, but for the skin and the test. Because the oil essence, when we have the test, is a three times much stronger the other lemon around. And we use the skin for making many things. We use it with the gelato. I like to make a nice spaghetti with the lemon cream and the fresh prawn. We use the pasticceri to make a nice delizia limone. And of course, we're making a limoncello. The limoncello is just an infusion of the zest and nothing else. For making a limoncello, you need a 10, 50 lemons, the sides like this. And it's very important, <laughs> when you go to buy the lemon, look for the lemon with the rough and thick zest. Because the more is rough and yeah, thick, more oil yes. essence is inside. Um. You need one liter of green alcohol. If you don't find the green alcohol, plain about the Castillo right? With the knife, you just peel all the zest. And it's very important, you just bring the yellow part, not white on the bottom, because white is a bitter. Mm -hmm. Put in the alcohol closed and leave in the darker place where it's no hot and no sun for 15, 20 days. After this, you just need to make a simple syrup. Half liter of water and half kilo of white sugar. Put on the stove, warm it up, wait till the temperature is coming down. Uh, mix everything together and take it away for another week. After this, you just need the drainer and the stocking because you need to filtrate everything. Because if you leave a little bit of zest inside your limoncello, when you put to the bottle line, it's not coming very clear, but it's cloudy. After this, stick in the freezer and the day after, enjoy your limoncello. On this way, the percentage of the alcohol is around the, uh, 40 to 43 percent. We usually drink after a meal for the chest. But if you want to drink limoncello for breakfast, lunch, and dinner all the time, the recipe I give is one to one. But you can make it one to two. One liter of alcohol and two liters of syrup. Like this, you put the percentage of match down. But don't go in more road trees because you know the alcohol is an antifreeze. In the freezer, is not froth. But if you put too much water in the freezer, it's coming very hard. Okay? On this idea is for making cream gelato. For making cream gelato, you need a milk, fresh cream, white sugar, glucose syrup, and golden syrup. Someone is already making ice cream or gelato home before? Yes. Yeah. You have a problem when you storage your gelato after one day? 
Does it get hard after one day? Yeah, it's coming very hard, yes? Which is type of sugar you use? Just white sugar? Yes, yeah, same thing? The problem is, the people who don't know, the sugar in the gelato is very, very important. The sugar in the gelato is give it a taste. The sugar is an anti protein The sugar is helped to incorporate the hair in the gelato. And the sugar is helped to your gelato to stay soft and clean and low temperature. By any sugar, have a different anti protein and different taste. And I tell you this because now, when we're making this lemon sorbet, in this case here, we use the white sugar and glucose syrup. The glucose syrup is giving the sorbet consistent, fluffy, smoothy in the gelato. To use white sugar, the problem is after 24, 36 hours, it's really starting to increase a lot. And after, if you don't put too much, it's coming very hard in the freezer. Um, I tell you, it's simple to understand why the sugar is so important in the gelato. If you bring out a liter of water and you put in the freezer, at what temperature does the water freeze? 32. 32 Fahrenheit. I'm working in Celsius, that's why I don't know that. Zero. Zero degrees Celsius. But if you bring half liter of water and you put 100 grams of white sugar, uh, I got shopping, and you put the white sugar into the gelato, you need, uh, for example, half liter of water and 100 grams of white sugar is making your gelato to working at minus one degree Celsius cut is coming through. But if you bring half liter of water and you put 100 grams of golden syrup, that's why you have same percentage of water, you have same percentage of sugar, but different quality of sugar, because one we put white sugar and the other golden syrup. The water, before it's coming through, you need a minus three, minus four degrees Celsius. That's why any sugar is changing the point for the water free. That's why when you want making your gelato, changing the sugar is making your gelato to stay soft at low temperature. Mm -hmm. That's why. Because the more white sugar you put, more your gelato is coming soft. But the other way, more your gelato is coming sweet. Yes. If you like, not a problem. If you don't, change the sugar and you're making your gelato soft, but not too sweet. Or if you like alcohol, a little bit of alcohol into the gelato, it's keep your gelato to stay soft at low temperature. Okay? This base here is for making all the flavors like hazelnut, pistachio, vegemite, macadamia, peanut butter, coffee, vanilla. From here you can buy for each flavors you want to make it. And down here I write everything for you. On this side here is for making chocolate gelato. For making chocolate gelato you need a meal, dark chocolate, and you decide how much dark fondue you like to use. But the important thing is the cocoa. When you buy the cocoa, it's important you buy a bitter cocoa, not sweet. Because if you buy sweet cocoa, it gives you half cocoa and half is sugar. Then you already have the sugar in the recipe. And after the cocoa is one, it gives you strong and richer flavors in your chocolate gelato. You turn the stove, warm it up, wait till the temperature is coming down, making your chocolate gelato. If you want it to play, you need to play. If not, I like to addict gelato my chocolate. And I, when I take off the gelato machine, I like to addict my chocolate with, uh, like this. I'm making it a flow with chocolate gelato, I like to dip chocolate with salty pistachio, with fresh macadamia. I'm making chocolate crunch caramelized bacon inside. I do chocolate rum, chocolate tequila, chocolate Guinness beer. It's possible to make it many different combinations with your chocolate. It's just your idea, okay? Now I need a, a volunteer because I know you hot. Yeah, you want a little bit of chocolate? Is it cold air coming down there? No. Because I just had him turn it on. Yeah.